I'm Anna. I'm from Britain. I'm travelling uh, on my career break, so I've stopped by this wonderful company of Japan to speak here on Woolworths. Uh, I'm mostly a Linux and Kubernetes person as far as work's concerns. Uh, and I love Linux. I've been using it since I was a kid. Uh, but I'm also not a purist. You may have noticed this is a Windows laptop. Please don't attack me. Uh, but this is kind of the theme of this talk. That uh, not, not that Linux is for everyone at all times in all places, but that maybe it's, it's for people in more places than it, should, than it is. We, we never stop talking about Linux desktop, by which I mean anyone who has anything to do with Linux. It feels like it's been our obsession since before I was born, quite probably. Uh, it, it feels like I felt hope that some day the world will just wake up and realize that Linux is best. And that probably is a felt hope, but that's, uh, but it's, I think the, the kind of theme of it is that people care really, really greatly about seeing Linux succeed. And maybe Linux succeeding doesn't mean that every computer wants Linux, but maybe it means that more one Linux than the current we do. So, but we normally talk on quite a more normal focus. We talk about computers that live at home. We talk about Steam Decks. We talk about Chromebooks. But desktop Linux can be in all these places and more. Uh, it doesn't have to be limited to the, to the home, even though the home is the most interesting place. So this, this talk is basically about rolling desktop weights out to non-technical users. Uh, it's inspired by my experiences uh, at the, my previous employers, Colcare, who were basically a 100% Linux estate from day one in the late 90s. Uh, so it's got three things. Go talk about some stories about desktop Linux, talk about the, the business case, why, why it should be in consideration, why it deserves consideration, and a little bit about the how. So. <sighs> Colcare's story is a little bit sad to me. Uh, so their UK outsourced call centre, basically they, they take calls for other companies. Uh, so from way early on, they were 100% Linux from the routers to the to servers, the desktops, uh, and it was done self-managed. So the, they were just, it was, the IT was won by Linux enthusiasts, basically. Uh, and there was uh, absolute heaven for anyone who loved Linux, and anyone who hated Linux would probably die at sight. Uh, and over time, the business the business changed its needs, uh, and it acquired other businesses that were using uh, Windows. So Windows and Office 365 crept in, and eventually killed off killed off almost all the Linux. Which, which is a sad story, but I think there's some learnings from it. So, I think, I think the sort of company that can best make use of uh, desktop Linux is one that is web-based. It doesn't have to worry about all the stupid Windows compatibility. Uh, and that, and it also means that if they have to use Windows for some things, then they, they can have seamless movement between the, the two. Uh, Self-managing desktop Linux is really, really hard. It's fun when you do it on your own computer, but it's, it quickly becomes a nightmare when you're trying to stick everything together and figure out how, uh, how to manage all these computers and how to train desktop support people to, to do basic support tasks, all these sorts of things. Oh, so Linux only has a place if it doesn't get in the way of the business's needs. If the business's success depends on not using Linux, then Linux no longer has a place. Uh, and th there aren't that many sto more stories about desktop Linux, and I've really struggled to find any that have been successful. Uh, 
but one that's kind of closer to home than uh, than some of the other ones that I've encountered uh, is Germany seems to have an obsession with desktop Linux for reasons unknown, probably because they really like their digital virginity. Uh, and they're way open about it, so there's a way which seem of, of things to, to learn about what they've done and what they are doing. Uh, so they had a spate of trying to do this in the early 2000s with two, the, two of their states doing it with their own internally developed Linux distribution. Uh, and, they've, and another one is trying it again uh, in Try Try 4. So, uh, and they've been doing a really cool thing with uh, a project they're calling Open Project, which is basically meant to replace Google and uh, for all the email, communication, all these sorts of things. So the, the one they're doing, the one that's being done right now is obviously in progress. There's not really much to, to earn from that, but the ones that failed in the early 2000s, I think, they have some useful things to offer. Firstly, office compatibility matters because office is the way that businesses communicate where it comes down to nitty-gritty, the admin stuff. If you need to receive spreadsheets, PowerPoint, anything from a normal company, then office compatibility probably very much matters. Uh, and this isn't as bad as it once was, but it's, it's still a problem. I guarantee you this presentation of not wondering with we office. Uh, because I've tried. So don't, don't DIY it. It's tempting as Linux enthusiasts to want to hack everything and to kind of put it together and just to build the kind of dream Linux system you would have for yourself for your desktop users. That's not a good idea because it's just too much work and you need people who have deep knowledge of Linux to be able to manage it. Uh, and third party apps are a stumbling block. They're always going to be a stumbling block because they do out for Windows because that makes sense and they've died for the last 20, 30, 40 years. And now the business case. I'm not sure how much of this will be relevant to you. I think this conference is a little bit more developer screwed than I thought it was. Uh, but anyway, here it is. Here's my perspective uh, as a more for operations person. Uh, the status quo. So if you want to challenge the status quo first, you need to understand why the status quo stays the status quo. Inertia is a big thing. People don't like change. Desktop work is change. And when something like Windows is so incumbent, people don't even see that there can be another way, there can be other solutions to a problem. Uh, and also, it's, it's, not, it's really hard work, it is. Uh, and it, and it, takes, it takes IT resources, it takes time, it takes, it takes being ready to deal with outage. And not every organization is ready to swallow that pill. And that's OK. Uh, and also software. It's, that's, that's the biggest, biggest stumbling block. Everything else is theoretical. It can be overcome with the mind. But software is, is everything to so many businesses. For instance, there's some, uh, with NHS, there's some applications which GP surgeries need to run. And those, those applications, I can tell you from experience, having set them up in the call centre I was working on, they barely run in Windows. They, they are so atrociously bad, yet they are absolutely critical to the NHS's infrastructure. So that would almost certainly never be an option in, in the NHS. It, desk, desktop Linux is great and all, and Tokes is really, really crude, uh, but principles and mascot crudeness don't really get you anywhere. It's got to have a real reason to exist, a real reason to go through the pain, to swallow this nasty pill. Or everything is theoretical. 
So there's various different ways, there's various different ways you can form a business case for this. I've identified five, which are probably one of the bigger ones, and two of those are smaller than others, but yeah. <sighs> Linux, Linux is more secure. I mean, this seems to come up a lot in desktop Linux discussions. Now, I'm not a kernel developer, and as we heard at a keynote earlier, there's thousands of CVs, uh, but it's, it's, it's more secure in the sense that it doesn't have to cater to, uh, to enterprises when they, want, they say they want their Mac calls. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to deal with, uh, it doesn't have to deal with ransomware and malware at the same extent. They just don't exist because people don't use it enough. Uh, and users find it a lot harder to mess with, which is a great, a great help when you're dealing with a disengaged minimum wage cohort of workers who happen to also be doing computer science degrees. Yeah, and may eyes and cold. So when there are problems, they're talked about, they're open, and they're, they're dealt with. But also, part of this is security for obscurity. If, if Linux, if you woke up tomorrow and every business was using Linux, then I can guarantee that within weeks there will be excellent malware and ransomware for it. But that's never going to happen, so. Uh, and there's, there's less a blueprint when rolling Linux out. With Windows, there's, there's a million consultancies who know exactly what they're doing with, death, uh, with, with Windows, and it, the documentation is all over the internet. Microsoft, it's in Microsoft's interest to tell you how to make win, Windows secure. Uh, and, and in complexity. I mean, haven't we all turned off SE Linux? I mean, if you've ever installed Kubernetes, you literally have to. Uh, and, and there's many small parts. Uh, it's much easier to mess with the Linux build system because there's so many build systems funneling into uh, one in each distribution than it is to mess with a Windows build system. Because at the end of the day, Windows build system isn't one by one maintainer in Nebraska. So, Linux is free, but not really, because in practice you have to pay. You have to pay for support. You have to pay for staff time. But even still, Windows licensing is a major cost for many organisations, and there's a massive there's a massive scope for cost saving here. But that amount of cost saving depends on how much you're actually spending on Windows. Many small and medium-sized organizations just buy refurbished computers and the cost of Windows is part of the cost. Uh, and practical benefits are open source because open source principles are great, but principles don't make money. Well, they might, but it depends. Uh, so you, you can control your data better, you know where your data is going and you don't have to deal with any kind of, uh, you don't have to deal with Microsoft taking it or doing anything silly with it. You can, you can pick and mix and get exactly what you need and nothing more, but you need the right skills to do that. And you're not at the whims of one authoritative support providers, many different support providers who have access to a code base and can support Linux effectively. And also, mod pools. Uh, so I'm not sure how much awareness there is, but Windows 10, uh, Windows 10 dying uh, and being made out of support as of 2025 has meant that millions of computers are basically going to go to Anfield because they don't meet the system requirements for Windows 11. Uh, and nobody's got a solution to that. You just have to kind of go in and bear it because Microsoft completely controls the, the ecosystem. But also CentOS dying. Within days there was a fault, within months there was a pretty much a winner. And everyone's gone home as normal ever since. If we developers, we IT people, we find a way to get Linux if we want it. And shadow ID, IT is a bad idea, even if it's IT people doing the shadow IT. Everything needs, everything needs to be managed, controlled, and secure. 
and making it a legitimate op option brings it under that management umbrella so that it, it can be managed and kept secure. And also, antidotally, uh, where it's computers stay useful longer, uh, both because they don't need as much system resources and also because they don't slow down as much over time. Now, this, this is mostly antidotal, but at cold care, we were running trial to 15 year old PCs and they were still serving our needs. So, yeah. I think, basically, as I said at the start, it's not for every company. These arguments don't make sense for every company, and especially not when you've got to face the, the kind of speed bump of persuading management about this. But I think it could be for more, especially for companies like call centers that are working on web-based products uh, because their user guys doesn't really care what they use. They just want to get their work done and get out the door. But this is obviously a, a thing which is very much dependent on the company and kind of their motives and their uh, goals for their business. Ask me how. Every company is different. There's no one size fits all blueprint. Some companies you could peel off the plaster and just do it straight away, always you'll have to do it staggered over time and probably and probably one that we some of your way your way its computers alongside Active Directory for a time. It, the management tools offered by providers worry greatly. Uh, Ubuntu is probably one of the strongest here. It's got a really solid uh, graphical management thing. And you might not need that, but the desktop support person you'll hire, Joey, well will. Uh, and if you, if you do consider this, don't DIY it. Do pay for a support contract. Don't try to do anything too odd. Don't want a weird distribution of Linux that you'd want on your personal computer because it can be a time sink and their business environment. That's a really, really bad idea. And lastly, be kind. Users do not like change. I've seen this firsthand because there were worse migration of Linux to Windows at call care actually caused quite a lot of problems because users really, really didn't like the change. And it doesn't matter what change it is, you could be changing their, their monitors and they'll say their computer isn't working. Uh, but if you're kind to them, they will at least come to tolerate it with time. And now, 12 minutes early, which is a record for me, but I'm finished. So, are there any questions? And this, uh, I've corrected to get some winks I worked out while I was working on this. So those are, those are actually quite interesting, especially the, there's a detailed case study of the, the German states and what they did and why they rolled back as well, which is really quite interesting. Yeah. Questions? Hello. Uh, how much of the concerns that you talk about here do you think apply to more of a business environment circumstance? And what would you say the situation is like in a more developer and operation team-centric perspective? Uh, that's, that's a good point. Uh, I think the difference between the kind of developer operations team is that you can allow for a lot more messing around. Uh, with desktop users, you kind of have one shot to convince them that Linux is okay. Uh, with desktop development operations people, they probably want it anyway. So you've got them on your side. So I think that's the biggest difference. Thank you. All right, so I guess no more questions? If you, if you want to talk about this topic, do come up to me afterwards. If you've got any experience, I'm quite interested to 
to learn about some successful stories if anyone's got any. So, yeah. Okay, uh, my question. Okay. I, I want to question. Okay. All right. I, I'm a so LibreOffice contributor. LibreOffice. Do you know LibreOffice? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so LibreOffice area, uh, Microsoft Office area is very important yes. for business. But so, uh, of course, so, uh, sometimes it's difficult to uh, migrate. But I, uh, it's not difficult. Some cases, it's not difficult. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. One of the most difficult things for us at Colco when it came to, uh, to cat compatibility with Microsoft Office was macros. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that sort of thing. And there's far too many business processes that require a stupid Excel sheet with a form in it and a, and a stupid dialogue box that pops up, uh, which is actually quite impressive. There's clearly someone there with some latent programming skills, but that's, that's really hard to get right. Yeah, I know, because I, I, my business is uh, so migration support. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Think. But maybe so. <coughs> uh, European country, so uh, some government so uh, moving to migration so to Linux. So uh, what status now? So, so useful or not useful? I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Ah, okay. So, um, so Linux desktop uh, in Japan, so sometimes problem is uh, input method problem. Yeah. Uh, European country, so maybe different. So because uh, uh, not using the input method in German or Eng English or so French. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, so I think I think you're you're talking about the input methods and Japanese uh, mm -hmm. being different from the European languages. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so what was the question? Sorry. Uh, I mean, so in Japan, so a little difficult point is uh, so Japanese input method problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe I think so. It's yeah. If it's clear, maybe good to the migration. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not as it's not a problem in the same way in the UK. It's because everything is assigned to one wing, uh, English, unfortunately. So, yeah. Thank you very much. It was a fantastic talk, really interesting. Um, and I'm just going to ask that one of the big um, uh, kind of barriers uh, that I feel to getting desktop Linux in a like a company setting, um, and this is just from my experience, is that there's no, to my knowledge anyway, no real kind of like remote management solution uh, for uh, desktop Linux. Um, yeah, something like, for example, with, with macOS, you have JamF, which is like quite a popular one. Um, and, you know, a lot of companies need that for um, just security reasons. And, if, for example, if they have government contracts, uh, they need a, a good remote um, management solution. Um, do you know if there is anything like that coming up for, you know, Linux on the desktop or um, anything similar to that? Uh Ubuntu has something called OneScape, uh, which is a GUI tool, and I think it scratches most of the itches from having played around it. Uh, at Colco, we use a combination of Poppet and WNC. So, yeah, because after all, where its, where it's desktops are still Linux, so they can be managed by Linux server management tools. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Fair enough. Uh, so I guess I guess that's me done then.